Hi everyone, uh, today we are with Sevan Kavakian from Birthright Armenia. Sevan, how are you? Doing great, thanks. Okay. Um, okay, to start off with, can you tell us a little bit about the path that brought you to Yerevan from, uh, from the United States? I flew in from Los Angeles to uh, Munich Airport. <laughs> but um, taking the question a bit more seriously, um, living in Armenia, moving to Armenia has, has always been something in the back of uh, an entire generation's mind, and actually even my parents' generation's mind. It's, it's something that the established diaspora communities had as part of their narrative for you know, many decades. Back when they, there was no free and independent country. Back when, yes, yes. Um, immediately post genocide, I would say. Um, so then the opportunity of, of independence came, came up. Independence happened. So now we have a modern state. We have a we have a state uh, which uh, gives the, um, the the chooser to uh, come here, move here, and uh, engage with the realities of this country. So. Uh, given the prior mindset that we that we've always had, uh, and you know, having my own family, it was uh, it was an opportunity that uh, we, we we thought about me and my wife you know, together. And uh, as we had very young children, we said, you know, this is the time for us to uh, try to make the move. And uh, fortunately, the opportunities came up. All the stars lined up correctly. And now you're here. Um, you've been the country director of Birthright Armenia for several year, uh, years now. Yes. Um, can you tell us how you came to work for Birthright and um, about some of the, the work that Birthright does in, in Armenia? Birthright is a, is a magical organization in the sense that it really uh, gives today's young adults the opportunity to come to Armenia and, uh, and understand it and connect with it in their own terms. Birth Armenia is magical in the sense that it operates year-round. It makes it financially feasible. Mm -hmm. So the traditional way to come to Armenia was think about, you know, how do you pay for your ticket? Where do I stay? How do I pay for my stay? Birthright allows you to circumvent all those obstacles. And it goes beyond tourism. It's way beyond tourism. It's pretty much, you know, you could say anti-tourism. <laughs> That's good. Maybe that could be the next t-shirt. Um, what, what about the travel fellowships? Tell us about the travel fellowships that bring, bring young Armenians to Armenia. It's, that's, that, that's one of the major incentives uh, that we offer. Basically, we say you find a time minimum of two months up to a year in your own life. And we'll make it affordable. We'll pay for your travel. We'll pay for your lodging with our host families. And pretty much everything that we have in the program is free of charge. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything. We don't have any application fees, participation, uh, processing fees. It's, it, it, it's pretty much a free program. On top of that, we, we pay for the travel fellowship. So we, we make it a win-win situation. You just find the time. And Birthright connects people with uh, volunteer organizations and, and volunteer programs in Armenia. Um, can you tell us about some of the programs that you work with? Mm -hmm. So we work with a network of uh, internship partners, such as the Armenian Volunteer Corps, such as the AYF uh, Western Region Youth Corps, and a number of other uh, programs. In total, about 10 to 15 programs, either based in the diaspora or local Armenian uh, internship partners. They're the ones that are uh, organizing every volunteer's uh, internship volunteers and uh, uh, reality. So where someone works, uh, where someone does their internship, all that is planned through our partners. Birthright couples the pure internship experience with the network of host families uh, and, and the other financial incentives language classes, excursion series, lectures, hubbocks, and other program-related activities. So we work the, with the partners because we basically tell our partners, you can use a birthright leverage to bring your own volunteers. So youth court, you can bring more uh, participants. By like getting over the financial barriers. By getting over the financial barriers. So the goal is to take the young Armenian, uh, have them see the country deeper than just tourism mm -hmm. and anti-tourism, 
make them useful as well in volunteers in very, very productive, good organizations, mm -hmm. and provide a support mechanism through language classes, through uh, excursions, and, and a lot of other social and fun stuff. And basically, local staff would exit as a support base. So no one feels alone, no one feels that they don't know where to go, what to do. From the airport picked up all the way to the end, everything is taken care of. I'm sure that ends the sad part. And this sad only if, if it's a one-way return. But if they know that there's always an Armenia in their future, there's always an opportunity to come back and re-engage in this country, it's, it's, never, it's never sad. Now, uh, why is it important for, for young Armenians uh, to see and experience this country firsthand? Very important. Um, I always say that just like someone goes through university stage, education stage, work stage in their lives, and a lot of people you know, end up getting married and so on, it, 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 it's a natural part of life's process. For a young adult Armenian between the ages of 20 to 30, coming to Armenia and experiencing it long term should be a very natural part of life's process. It shouldn't be something that's if I can, if I feel it's you know, possible. When my schedule life, lets me. When, when my schedule lets me. We make it affordable, but then the decision has to be on their part. And it has to be a really natural part of the, of the, you know, the maturing process. And it helps transcend stereotypes. It helps transcend making Armenia just a romantic notion of the homeland. It takes Armenia off the walls and it brings it into someone's reality. So it's not just a country to be cherished in a book or on the wall or through your grandparents' stories. It's a country to be experienced firsthand. Mm -hmm. So turning it from a distant, distant dreamland to a land of opportunity. To a land of reality. To a land of reality. And the reality will then dictate opportunity and everything else. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest problems um, in the Armenian nation, uh, the Republic, is emigration. Um, especially young, able-bodied and able-minded people um, leaving. Uh, another is the huge number of uh, Armenians that live outside of the Republic today. Um, how, how is this trend going to change? Well, right now Armenia is a country still in transition. It's still moving away from, from its recent past of being part of a an authoritarian system, the central government, centrally governed system. And giving today's young generation the opportunity to be their own master, to follow opportunities, to create opportunities, to develop your own life path, is something that doesn't happen overnight necessarily. So right now, Armenia's, Armenia is in a transi transitionary state. And I'll tell you that today's 20-year-old, compared to 1990s 20-year-old, is a very different person in a lot of senses. It doesn't mean that everyone is different, mm -hmm. but you see a young critical mass who is educated differently, who has a worldview which is way different than it was in 1990 or 1980. And I have full faith in a critical mass, critical minority mass, of young people who will dictate this country's agenda moving forward. And all the issues and challenges that we, we all are aware of and we all know um, are, are a hindrance to this country's progress will become irrelevant because of a lot of young vi visionary people who are going to drive the agenda and everything else will, will become you know, secondary. Do, do, do diasporas have a role in this? I don't like the word diasporas. I don't either. We are Armenians living in global reality. You can live in Los Angeles, you can live in Yerevan, you can live in Tokyo. Do we have Armenians in Tokyo? Of course we, we probably do. We have Armenians everywhere. We have Armenians living in different cities. But if you're mentally engaged in this country's reality, and if you're practically engaged in this country's reality, that's what really matters. Mm -hmm. So I will not put down any person living anywhere that says, you know, I'm practically engaged. That's what's important. It's a worldwide, global Armenian reality with a country and with people living also in another country, the homeland, and people living in another country. So that's 
Well, what's important isn't for someone to think that I'm a diaspora. If you think you're a diaspora, you're disenfranchising yourself from this country's reality. And that's unfortunate. You know, mm -hmm. we've, we've been disenfranchised for way too long. So in the right now you say that that's my country. And if, if it's your country, then how do you practically participate and engage? Excellent. Um, in, the, in the diaspora today, it seems like we've come to a crossroads where the two major sort of, sort of like existential choices that we have are to put our efforts into the developing country um, physically or, and mentally um, or dig deeper and try to continue to fight against assimilation, um, educating our new generations to, to, to maintain that identity and to try to improve on that identity, um, keep their language and culture so they have that desire for the next generation to see this as a homeland. Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we bring these two together? The two have to be looked at as part of one package. And uh, it is not one or the other, it's one with the other. So the practical engagement in this country, coming and seeing and experiencing this country firsthand long term, not just two weeks, no, long term, is an absolute must for every diet, every Armenian living anywhere in the world. But we also have Armenian structures, communities, entities uh, outside of Armenia, which have to remain vital, which may have to very much transform their agendas from what they, they used to be 30 years ago, which is which is an issue which I, we can have a separate you know, discussion about. They have to transform their agendas so an Armenian living in Los Angeles or living in Toronto isn't thinking silo, the silo of Toronto, is not thinking the silo of Los Angeles. Is, is thinking globally. They have a very wide uh, field of view, mm -hmm. and Ar Armenians and our Armenian reality isn't uh, limited to the Hollywood Armenian Center. But it's the global Armenian reality, including Gumri, including Hollywood, and they're thinking and they're acting in that fashion. Yeah. So and where every individual fits into Where Yeah, the, the individual basically is not limited by its physical location. The individual is thinking much, much wider. And one of the things that I can say is that with, with birth rate Armenia, it gives people the opportunity to have a much wider, much wider field of view. So they're not limited to living and thinking the reality of a certain geographical you know, location. They're thinking now much wider about the possibilities. A lot of birth rights volunteers come from backgrounds where um, they might not have had everyday involvement in the Armenian community. Yeah. Uh, some that are half or quarter Armenian. Mm -hmm. um, some that come from cities around the world that don't necessarily have dense Armenian populations. Uh, what attracts them? There's a, generally there's a very deep echo somewhere within their psyche, within their genetics. And the story of a grandfather told when they were five years old, or the smell of food around the table that their grandmother made, is the only array of Armenianness that has been passed along to them. And now they're they're they're, they're the age of 25, and they hark back to that memory, and they say, "There's something that I want to go find out. There's something I want to go explore." And it's, it's very, very magical. And I don't really want to find out the exact ticking point of every single individual because that's, that, that's, that's, that's theirs. It's really that, that's very personal. We just say, we don't disenfranchise you because you're quarter, you're half, you're from, you're from a non-community, you're from Nebraska, you're from you know, a Brazilian village where there are no other Armenians. You, know. you, you think, Something within you is calling you. We are here. We are for you as much as for, for anyone else. And that diversity of background, that diversity yes. of, of mindset, is going to make the country richer. It's great. It's great. A lot of a lot of Armenians, you know, come and discover the real global Armenian reality in Armenia. In their own little communities, they think they know. They come here. They see the diversity. They say, "Oh my God! I thought I knew, but I didn't know Armenia." And I didn't even know 
the outside of Armenia because outside of Armenia is much more than what I thought it used to be. Look at all these different faces, and we all have commonalities. That's the difference between reading and knowing and seeing and understanding. Experience, yeah, um, so do you see young Armenians that go through the program, um, do you see them coming back? Do you see them uh, coming to live for longer periods of time? You, you, I know you work very closely with every single one of your volunteers. Um, do you see that? Do you see a shift in their in their in their minds that says that there is a future here for me? As an observer, I can say that the the mental shift is always there. I can say that the expanded field of view of what it is to be Armenian is always there. Everyone goes through a very unique and individual experience. And everyone's post-experience path is very, very different. We don't have a timeline saying that you must come back you know, six months post-experience, otherwise it didn't affect It fizzles away. It never fizzles away. Because I've seen people years later, after seemingly having lost connection, years later, all of a sudden, they're back with a, with a project. They're back with another group. And it's, it's very, very individual. So that little, that little you know, on-off button in every individual is triggered. And, and it's done in a very unique fashion. So we don't have a model that fits all. You know, 600 previous volunteers, you see the photos behind us, 600 unique you know, experiences. And uh, the shift it, it is always there. And it always manifests itself at some point in the future, whether it's immediately post-experience or it's years later. And we still have volunteers, you know, years and years after their experience, they're still waiting for their own opportunity to come and, and, and engage. Um, what's next for Birthright? 500 volunteers a year. Having a presence in other cities outside of Yerevan, not just seasonally, but uh, year-round. Tapping into Armenian communities that we have not tapped into yet. Opening the, uh, the Russia-slash-Ukraine-slash-former Soviet uh, states uh, to much larger numbers of participation, which, by the way, is starting to happen this year through a you know, very good effort you know, on behalf of the staff to uh, get into social media in Russian-speaking countries and, uh, and I mean, Russian-speaking or Ukrainian-speaking and so on. So there's a, there's, a, there's a huge Armenian presence in former Soviet countries that we think are right next to us, so they don't have the same assimilation issues. They don't have the same, you know, away from the homeland issues. But I've come to realize myself that the same issues that uh, affect Buenos Aires or Marseille or, you know, Los Angeles, they affect Moscow, they affect Kiev, they affect even the nearby communities. Assimilation, lack of identity, it's a reality everywhere. Um, I want to thank you very much for your time, uh, for, 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 for the excellent work. Um, on, on a personal note, I look forward to expanding the work that AYF's Youth Corps program does with Birthright, and there's, there's, there's infinite potential. Thank you very More much. More than infinite. Great.